Good evening and good to have you with us in the 9 p.m. edition of the Urban Debate. Viewers, there seems to be a lot of buzz and activity beginning in Jammu and Kashmir again. And what has also pumped up the conversation and the activity is the Prime Minister's decision to hold a meeting with the political leaders of various parties from Jammu and Kashmir on June 24th. Now, this is very interesting. What is also more interesting is that the initial response from most of the parties has been positive. They're all interested, it seems, barring a few big ones who are part of the Gupkar Alliance, like the PDP, that are yet to formally announce their decision. But they seem to be reacting in a positive way to at least have a conversation. Now, what kind of conversation happens on June 24th? Are they able to get on the same page as far as the future and the democratic electoral future of Jammu and Kashmir is concerned? Remains to be seen. But 14 different party leaders from Jammu and Kashmir have been invited for this big meeting. Now, various reports suggest that the focus could be on restarting the democratic process in Jammu and Kashmir. Remember... The delimitation exercise has been on to really redefine and, in a sense, establish new constituencies, total number of constituencies, after Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh were separated and split into two union territories. Now, sources suggest that the leaders from, from the region may be asked to be part of the delimitation exercise. Obviously, the issue of full statehood is going to come up, even if not from the centres and from the political parties and already a few parties like the Panthers party and of course the Congress have already said that first address the demand of full statehood and that needs to be looked into before we then go on and hold elections that's the only way to move forward. Now before this meeting on June 24th a key meeting between the members of the Gupkar Alliance will be held. This meeting will be tomorrow and until this happens, PDP is yet to make an announcement on what they want to do, whether Mehbooba Mufti will join or not. Now, Times of India reported that the Political Affairs Committee does want Mufti to attend this meeting, but there is some indecision and apprehension about the agenda of this meeting, what it is that the Prime Minister is going to say. All of this perhaps would get clearer tomorrow. Once the Abdullahs and the Muftis and every other big leader from various political parties of part of the Gupkar Alliance meet tomorrow. Tonight I want to focus on how this could be a game changer. Finally, how this could be a start or I hope it becomes a start to bringing back the electoral process, the proper democratically elected process of having leaders in a state or a union territory. There will need to be a lot of confidence building measures. This will also push further development activities. There needs to be essentially a conversation. Since the ab abrogation of Article 370, for the longest time, even the biggest of the faces, their relatives, all the active political faces have been in some or the other kind of house arrest, behind bars, not allowed to move, not allowed to talk. All of that, that has now in the recent past changed. So can we now move on together towards a newer setup in Jammu and Kashmir? Let's say good evening to Manoj Joshi, senior journalist, joining me right now, Najmu Sakib of the PDP, Nija Chaudhary, also a senior journalist, Niti Jain of the BJP, Imad Maktoumi, columnist and political analyst, are also joining me right now. Mr. Manoj Joshi, let me start off with you. Are you very hopeful of you know, a, a new beginning starting June 24th, or do you think we will again hit a dead end the minute the two sides come together for a conversation? You know, Kashmir has had so many new beginnings, and uh, that's a big, uh, big, big problem. Uh, I think we also need to recall that the original action in derogating Article 370, whether it was legal at all, I mean, we, we, we simply don't uh, 
the Supreme Court has, or the various courts have simply ignored it. But the fact of the matter is, there is a particular process. My own understanding is that the derogation can only take place if the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly uh, did so. Now, the point is, you simply demoted a state. You decided that the state is going to become a, a, a union territory. Now, there's a big difference between the two. We know that. We know in Delhi, as I live in Delhi, uh, how union territories are treated by the union government. So, taking a huge area like Jammu and Kashmir and demoting it, demoting, that's the word I use, India is supposed to be a union of states. Meaning this, the, the, this word center is something which was not there in the constitution. So I'm, I'm raising these issues because I'm saying that uh, unless and until we get an understanding, grasp these issues, uh, we can't have a kind of a conversation where uh, it's something, Delhi is giving out something, uh, Srinagar is receiving it, and vice versa. The point is, this is supposed to be a union of all of us. And that has not happened, meaning that the whole uh, derogation of Article 370, the whole process, the putting people in jail uh, for a long time, denying um, connectivity for a long time, all this was just went against all that, meaning the, 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 the very basis on which the Union of India exists. Hmm. Right. Okay. You're fair enough. Uh, a lot has happened in the last couple of years which would have further dented any kind of trust or ties between the political parties from Jammu and Kashmir, a majority of them at least, and the center basis. The action, Neerja Chaudhary, do you think that will become a big hurdle now as we look to have this conversation and Prime Minister looks towards hosting them? The lack of trust basis, the actions of the last two years, will that be the first key hurdle? Are you asking me? Uh, Tunisia Chaudhary, that I question. I think so. Yes. I think you put it absolutely right because there are the substantive issues that will have to be addressed and there are differences of perception. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I was saying, yes, the deficit of trust is the first issue that is going to be to have to be addressed because there are the substantive issues that will have to be addressed as time goes on. But to reach out to each other, to hear each other, to listen to each other, uh, ultimately the solution will have to come through talking, through a dialogue. Sooner or later, that is the only way to go. And that this initiative has been taken for whatever reasons, whether there is international pressure, U.S. pressure, there have been congressional hearings where uh, the U.S. Uh, people have, uh, the Assistant Secretary of State has talked openly about uh, uh, India, the need for India to restore human rights and democratic rights in Jammu and Kashmir. They, the U.S. is pulling out of Afghanistan. All those factors are there. And yet, I think the fact that the Kashmiri parties and the Kashmiri leaders are considering coming to Delhi to meet with the Prime Minister is in itself a uh, a uh, good step, uh, progress in the right direction, I think. But the ultimate thing will have to be the trust deficit that will have to be addressed. No, you're absolutely right, you know, and, and uh, that was a uh, pleasant uh, 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 you know, thing to see that many of the parties have responded in the positive to say, okay, yes, uh, we are glad that the Prime Minister is calling us that we are going to have a conversation about this. Uh, and so, Neeti, let's start off with you. What is the intention? What would your party really like to discuss with the political politicians from JNK as a way forward? Um, look, I'm not going to speculate about what the prime minister is going to talk about because he alone knows what that meeting is going to be about. Uh, but what Mr. Uh, Joshi said and what Neil Jaman said, I think all of that is very true in principle. But again, for a discussion to happen, people need to be on the same pages. The distance that came in was because people were not on the same page. pages. The uh, political parties, we know the kind of statements that were made after the abrogation of the Article 370 and all of those things. So it has been a process. It has taken us this long to come to one platform, one table, and start talking about what needs to be done about development and about what all has happened in Kashmir. We know in the past two years, uh, 
uh, the LG and the center has given a lot of funds. There are aims, the land, the investments has, have started happening. Uh, the jobs have gone, gone up. The COVID management in Jammu and Kashmir has been one of the best in the country. So all of those things are the benefits of having uh, a UT that was created, sir. And yes, statehood is something that even Amit Shahji had said on the floor of the parliament that it is going to happen. But once the normalcy is back in Jammu and Kashmir, maybe this meeting is a step forward towards that. But what this meeting is about, I'm not going to speculate about that, but it is a good step. The, uh, all the parties, and I know that PDP is still deciding on whether or not Ms. Mufti is going to attend it or not. It needs to be a platform where they come together and talk about what is going to happen next. We know the Panchayat elections were a huge success. They, uh, the elections were conducted. There was almost no violence during the whole process. So it is a step forward, right? When have we heard before the abrogation, when, when all of this was a very peaceful process? It wasn't. And we know Jammu Kashmir is always going, it was and for a bit now, it is still not a normal state. It is, it has its issues, but then those issues are being resolved. Yeah, and well, this, for two years has been far too long as a time taken to get to this point. Whatever no, be the reasons. this issue has been for 70 okay, years. Good, good that the, uh, uh, the, the step has been taken. But you it raised a very interesting point. And let me, before I go to our other panelists, take it back to Mr. Manoj Joshi. Mr. Joshi, um, you know, whether it continues to be a union territory or becomes a full state and then we hold elections. Can all of that as a conversation and planning exercise continue while we still debate whether the decision itself was legal or not or constitutional or not? Because in, in the latter, not much progress has happened over the last two years. You know, my point is that this was such a, it was like using a hammer. You know, it was the, uh, it was such a blunt instrument. Because I'm not even, as I said, there is an issue of illegality because people of Kashmir deserve representation through an assembly. They're a big state. They're not, they're not, go, they're not uh, what, Lakshdweep, you know. Uh, it's a huge state. Uh, people, you have to have the consent of the governed is required. Panchayat election is not good enough. Meaning to claim that panchayat elections were great, you know, otherwise you can have panchayats all over the country. Meaning, why do we need um, uh, assemblies in UP? Why don't? Why can't we have just panchayats in UP? Why can't we derogate UP, make it union territories uh, all over the place, and it can be run by Mr. Amit Shah and uh, Mr. Modi uh, from here in Delhi? What's the problem? Sir, again, in principle, I think I agree with what you're saying, but again, the problem is that on ground. We know that the entire government was handled by two families and not really the people's government. If you go to the ground today and you listen to the people, the entire panchayat elections that have happened are away from the family. They are the people's people. They are the true representatives. And let us take it a step ahead. That is what the government has been trying. That is what the intention is. That is where we need to go. But the point is, are we ready to do that today? That is something that is up for discussion. And I'm, I'm willing to hear you on that. In principle, everything you're saying is right. The, uh, the Jammu Kashmir state, the people deserve representation. But then we need to decide as a country what kind of representation are we looking at. You know, I'd just like to make one short comeback. I have covered two elections in Jammu and Kashmir, personally. I'm, 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 not, the... I'm not questioning your credibility, I'm, sir. I'm just wait, making wait, a point. Wait, wait, you're wait, much wait, senior than me. I'm, I'm in no way no, no, questioning no, point... your credibility. No, no, the point is not that. I've covered two elections. And the first one that I covered in, I think it was 2002, uh, was, in my view, the first genuine election. The people of Kashmir elected whoever they elected. You know, it is not that there were two families. And that ha families happen everywhere. Meaning across India, you'll see many families uh, uh, being elected. Do they say just because you belong to a family, you don't deserve, uh, you, uh, you're not democratically elected? Uh, you have been on ground. You know Jammu Kashmir is not like any other state in this country. We know the separatists. We know all, all of the intrusions that come from the neighboring uh, countries. 
we know it has been a state which is not the normal state of any other uh, okay. district Fair or enough. any, of course any it's other not. state. Of course it's not, which it, is it why we are having this conversation. Yeah, Neeti, you, you, oh, fair enough. The point that we're trying to make is that, you know, to say that it was always in control of two political parties and so that system has to be dismantled is not correct. The system must be there. People should be democratically allowed to choose whether it's at the panchayat level or at the assembly level. Now, allow me, allow the me. The system needs to be dismantled. Sorry, just let me correct that. I did not say the system needs to be dismantled. The BJP has maintained that we need to come back to the election process, the democratic process. It's just that, are we ready right now? With okay, the are we ready right made? now? Okay, fair enough. Are we ready right now? Najmu Sakib, what are the key apprehensions that your party has that you still haven't openly taken a decision on whether you will attend this meeting, Mehbubha Mufti will attend this meeting or not? Well, first of all, it is really sad that he took international sort of, you know, deal-making and, uh, you know, back-channel talks for the prime minister of a country and the home minister of a country to start negotiations and conversations with democratically elected uh, leaders and representatives of the people of Jammu Kashmir. It's really sad. Having said that, if the uh, agenda of all party meeting is restoration of democracy. All we are asking is, where is Indian Rashid? He was an elected representative of the people of Kashmir. If there is a, a step towards restoration of Kashmir, why are those young boys, you know, who are killed when their parents ask for their bodies? Why is UAPA being slapped against them? Why are painters being booked? Why are journalists being harassed? Why is our land being, you know, uh, auctioned? Why, why is our bureaucracy being sidelined? So this systematic assault on the structure and the identity of the Kashmir, and not just Kashmir, mind you, in Jammu as well, where we see jobs going to outsiders, where people are seriously scared that their land will be taken over by people from other states. And mind you, we, I mean, you know, we, as a, as a previous panelist said, that, you know, Jammu uh, and Kashmir is not like, why is it not like another state? You take the parameters, so you, you take the human development be. index, it is always Mr. better Sake, compared to the, compared to the other states of India. You have answered your own question. You don't want normalcy to be there in Kashmir or Jammu. You, you have detailed, no. no, you have detailed the entire thing. You point. don't want outsiders to come please in, allow me to which basically my point. means you don't want to be part of the country. Okay, let him please finish his me, point. I will come back to, to you. Please yes. allow me to complete my point. Yes. So the point, you see, look, you guys are, you you know, you are uh, masters of U-turns. First, you called us Gukkar gang. Now we recognize us as leaders. During the PDP, BJP government, you signed an agenda of line. You said you will talk to Huriyat. Then you reneged on that promise, said we never said, we never made that promise. So you guys are just, you know, you, uh, masters of uh, U-turns. Let's not discuss BJP. We know you're in and out. Let's not discuss. But this is something bigger. This is about restoration of Jammu and Kashmir. See, if there is a serious initiative, why is an all-party meeting being called to negotiate statehood, which has been promised on the floor of the House? That should be a confidence-building measure, not something up for negotiation. Negotiation no should be up for the, the rights of that. Jammu and Kashmir. Negotiation should no be one... about the identity of the Jammu okay, and Kashmir. Okay, okay, okay. Now, let me ask this very basic question. Uh, 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 we know that the Congress party, we, we, we also know a couple of others have already said that they want full statehood as part of the conversation. In fact, Congress has said this should be the first step before we even talk about anything else. Is, is that the view of the Gupkar Alliance partners or the PDP, Najmo? Well, certainly there is a meeting tomorrow. Uh, all the constituent parties of the People's Alliance for Gupkar Declaration will take a concentrated, we know, will take a, a joint view. Uh, so, you know, uh, would there be... Uh, a sort of, you know, uh, collective charter of demands or would there be an individual party-centric charter of demands? So all these issues would be discussed right there. But given what was done to us, you know, if you remember on August 4, 2019, when all these constituent parties met together, do you know what was the resolution that was passed? The resolution that was passed was that we will jointly call on Prime Minister and see guarantees that the rights of Jammu and Kashmir will not be snatched away. Mm. And what did they do? They put us behind bars for just seeking a meeting. And today, unfortunately, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, there's another U-turn, they want us to come and meet them. But we are, okay, look, we have taken a positive step. Despite our leaders being, you know, thrown in jails, you know, our, uh, um, our state marauded, our economy decimated, 
I, you know, they, you talk about infrastructure, there is policy paralysis everywhere. Nothing is moved. But despite all of what has been done, we are ready to put our best foot forward and we will not shy away from dialogue. It okay. is sad that you know that the government Sandhi, of India has to come start in. No, so, so good part is, and I want to emphasize on this, the good part is, and, and you really, um, there isn't much to gain to only dwell in the past. We will not be able to move forward. I do agree, uh, certain, you know, unacceptable uh, actions were done should be questioned but the way to move forward is to only come back on the table with a clean slate and at least have a conversation on how no, to bring no, no, about no, no, a no. democratic Sandy, process Sandy, I'd like to back in, in the state put our yes foot forward. yes before before i go across uh, uh, before i go across to imad yes neeti go ahead i think everything that mr sakib has said answers your question if we are ready to do this because they're still living in the past they still don't agree that jammu and kashmir is part of this country they're calling everybody outsiders. They don't want them to come and do their work there. They don't want investments from uh, the country to go into Jammu and Kashmir. What are we talking Jammu, about? Sir, sir, the reason that you were uh, under detention or under house arrest was because your leader came out and said, if you abrogate 370, we will give you those were the lines that were said. There Absolutely was a certain wrong. security issue. Absolutely there was a, wrong. There was what a certain Sanjira, security issue Sanjira, that said... needed to take they, that needed to be taken care of, and that was the reason for two all of years. Steps were taken for two years, one year, one and a half year, for months for together years, to put but them behind the bars, where wrong. they had to go back to keep you going back the to the Supreme. One minute, ne uh, Neeti, I think we're going to go. Uh, uh, this is a very slippery slope if you're going to get into a conversation of the legality of the months and months and year-long detentions of several of the political leaders where even the Supreme Court had to come in and ask a few questions. So let's not. I seriously want to now and look ahead. Step one has to be confidence was... building measures. Step two has to be to get everybody on the same page on the way going forward. That's what we are looking at right now. And here I want to bring in Imad. Imad, do you agree with you know uh, what Nirja Chaudhary was also saying? That, uh, you know, it's it's good to see. This is a positive sign that at least parties are willing to come on the table and have a conversation. Now, while that is uh, looks like the easier part, the difficult one will be what happens on June 24th and how to then take it forward with everybody along. Well, I think, you know, first of all, you know, I I really don't uh, think that there is a, you know, there is a need of calling a PAC meeting before meeting the Prime Minister of our own country. Please understand whosoever has been invited uh, to attend the Prime Minister's uh, meeting in Delhi on 24th June has been an ex-MLA or has been a part of system. I don't, I don't, you know, understand what is the need of, you know, uh, calling a PAC meeting and then deciding whether how should we go, what should we do. Because the prime minister, because we all see, there is no, there is no doubt about one thing: Kashmir is an integral part of India, and all these people, whether from the National Conference or the People's Democratic Party, have been, you know, either chief ministers, deputy chief ministers, MLAs, and they continue to be the pension holders of the government of the, you know, uh, of the Union of India. So I don't understand what, why is there so much of hesitation before, you know, going and simply meeting our prime minister? It's, it's prime minister has asked, you know, their own leaders to come and, you know, speak to them on the restoration, restoration of the democratic processes in the uh, union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. I mm -hmm. think we must accept it and we must, you know, without, without giving any conditions, without, without raising any question marks, we should go and meet the prime minister and discuss the way forward. I think that's what they had been. That's would they, the, that's would they, they not been, want you know, to? Uh, Fair enough. I, I understand that there shouldn't be any. That I understand should be restored. that there shouldn't should be, be any elections should take place. I understand there shouldn't be any preconditions, Mr. Magdumi, and I, I agree and, and with you, you and because it's the one, prime one minister who's point, calling you for a conversation. With, with, but with my you, question is, why should the alliance partners uh, 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 and some of these parties not discuss it amongst themselves of what it is that they would like to talk to the prime minister about and like to say to the prime minister? No, that's okay. If they want to discuss that, that's okay. That's completely all right. If they want to discuss what what do they say to the uh, honourable prime minister? But my point is that, you know, 
my my with all due respect to my friend from the pdp najmu sakib he just said where is engineer rashid let me let me you know very respectfully tell him that engineer rashid is behind the bars for terror finance if they raise this condition that engineer rashid should be first released and then they will go and meet the prime minister i think it's incorrect on his part to say that anybody who compromises with the national interest and the national security cannot be a you know we cannot put it as a condition that first release him then we will come and talk if the government of india has put him behind the bars it is for terror financing you know so my point is that it's it i have i have nothing uh, you know it is completely all right to meet and discuss what to convey to delhi what to convey to the prime minister but you know uh, you know putting some preconditions uh, saying that we have been dismantled this and that has been done there is uapa on the journalist because they all they do is that you know they spread hate if there is a law which has been you know implemented by the government or any security agency it is in the interest of the security of this nation and the welfare of the kashmiri people who have been fooled for all these years and i don't think that the, you know at this is the correct time when mainstream politicians from the parties like pdp must you know put these pre conditions that all our leaders have been have been in the jail you know uh, our journalists are being targeted there is nothing of that sort happening anybody but yes anybody who is a threat to the security of this union territory and threat to the peace and progress of the you know this place this region will be tackled by the government of india they cannot say that you know release engineer rashid then we'll come for a, for a for a meeting engineer rashid is behind the bars for a terror financing yeah so my okay. point is that i have nothing okay, there's okay. nothing wrong in meeting and discussing what is to be conveyed to the prime minister what is to be discussed there okay But putting three conditions Fair enough. Fair enough. Najmu Sakib, you know, do you want to respond to that? Absolutely not correct. And you know why first are we all, giving two sides? First of all, I would like to remind my fellow Indians that we are telling we are telling New Delhi. We are, why? Can I can I speak? Yes, yes, Najmu Sakib. So, uh, first, I'd like to remind my fellow fellow panelists that Engineer Rashid is an accused person, not an. Uh, you know he's not a convicted person so branding him as someone who's terrorist terror finance and that thing that is you know uh, that's wrong to say simply that's number one point second point about you know why do we need to discuss something before meeting the prime minister of this country last we checked that supreme court in in its multiple judgments had said that the you know article 370 article you know 35 they have almost Uh, attained, you know, sort of uh, permanent structure within the uh, constitution. Right. Number one, since that basic structure of the constitution has been altered, that trust has been altered. How a government, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, was uh, dissolved, an assembly was dissolved, people were put behind bars. You know, everything that Jammu and Kashmir has been new, it was decimated. So there is a trust factor. There is an issue of credibility. so that credibility needs to be restored it is not no one has any apprehension of, of meeting a prime minister and and in fact this is very you know juvenile to say that why should we meet so i have discussions before meeting a prime minister. it's a democracy everyone has a right to do their politics everyone has to right to profess their ideology and and no one can be accused behind, you know in the garb of terrorism and we had recent high court ruling where high court said that you know you cannot brand dissent as terrorism and then you know shut it down that's not the way democracy works here we you know that was last that last thing last uh, you know when it happened was in 86 when and the result was rigging and we saw what happened the blow back, back of that hmm. so let's not show everything under the carpet let's let dissent flow there are multiple uh, ideologies you know let them profess their politics if someone is advocating dialogue that's not you know uh, can i can i just come in over we, here we know it like for example i'll, I'll give a very small uh, anecdote you know for pdp for last couple of years every time we talked about issue of uh, having dialogue with pakistan we were uh, called terrorist now government is talking to taliban government is talking to pakistan you know you so you, you put us in jail for that a little bit more about the international politics before making these statements all well, together okay. afghanistan we, and we pakistan we all do better everyone does afghanistan and pakistan are a completely just, different chapter can you chapter. just give me, will, can you just give me one second please on that when the no, when no, they no because that's an issue okay. it affects the, problem, the people of the world please the problem sir here is that the trust of the people has been gained can by I, the can uh, i can i just government. come in for a second so let me just finish let me just finish 
uh, the terrorism has gone down in the state by about 25%. The youth recruitment has gone down. And these are government figures that I'm quoting to you. And today you're sitting here and you're questioning the trust and everything, the credibility of the government. It is not only for the political parties that the credibility and the trust needs to be established. It is for the people of Jammu and Kashmir. So before you come out and say that the development has not happened and the trust is not there, so the trust may not be there for you because you are obviously still talking about an agenda. You need to understand that we are on the same side. We are on the side of Jammu and Kashmir. We are on the side of the country and the state. We are not you and us. We are us. And that is something that needs to be instilled in the political parties of Jammu and Kashmir today. Okay, let me let me take this up and let me take it across to two of our senior journalists. First to Mr. Manoj Joshi and then to Nidhira Chaudhary. Mr. Joshi, uh, have things improved on, 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 on ground as the data seems to suggest in terms of development, job creation and terrorism most importantly in the last two years? Is there merit to this argument that under the central government, uh, the this, uh, region seems to be doing better? Uh, I would like to correct... Uh under the union government, don't call it central government, because the constitution says union government, number one. Uh, number two, my information, it's not. I mean, my information, nothing has happened. Even the it's promise... A, it's that the Times of buy, India report, I can send it to you. Even, even the promise that you could buy land in Kashmir, you could set up industries, investment, nothing has happened. All I can say is, what you've succeeded in doing is scaring the daylights out of the people in Jammu. Because if anyone's going to put in money, they'll put it in Jammu. I'll be damned if I put money into uh, the Sri uh, into the Kashmir Valley. Because there's still, no matter what our fellow panelist says, there's still terrorist threat there. But the worry is for the people of Jammu. Because they are worried that if you lift the rules that restricted uh, external, you know, uh, outside people coming in, etc. they will be the first people to get wiped out. And if I'm not mistaken, they are the ones who've been resisting uh, this, this, uh, these kind of changes. So all I'm saying is, I've seen nothing in the last two years which suggests to me that there has been this huge success, investment has poured in, um, the state is flourishing. All I can say is the state has been marking time. So with it all due respect, time. I don't agree with you. There is sufficient investment. No, I can send it to you via your guest you're coordinator. On a, you're running on a treadmill. You're running on a treadmill. And when you say that move forward, positive dialogue, etc., all I can say is what the government is doing today is walking back. It is walking oh, back God. on this big yeah. mistake it made in 2019. And it's trying to figure out what to do now. Okay. So to, to, to add to that, let me bring in Nija Chaudhary as well. And then, Neeti, you can respond. Uh, Nija Chaudhary, would you agree that a lot of what's happened today is perhaps also due to the international pressure? Much has been written about that as well. Uh, uh, think, is that speeding up the process? I think the fact that suddenly this has come, obviously international pressure is one of the factors. I would say, you know, hypothetically, suppose things have improved, hypothetically, I don't know what the answer to that myself, uh, uh, not having been there, not having a, a touch with the ground level. Uh, suppose hypothetically, under the control of the central government or Union of India, things have improved. Is that the way you are making a case that that should be the permanent state of affairs? Can you ever make a case there? There have to be elections, there have to be elected government. So that is the direction in which to go. And if you want a dialogue, which the Prime Minister has taken the initiative to call different parties for a dialogue, then you must, we must, we may disagree with the Kashmiri point of view, but we must listen to their voices. We must listen to their pain. We must listen to their anguish and all that they have gone through in the last months. At least try and understand, even if we don't agree with it. Because that is the starting point of a dialogue. And, you know, Mehbooba Mifti taking her time, for instance, I want to say this one word, uh, over it. It's a very difficult decision if you put yourself in a position. Very difficult decision. She was kept in jail for much longer. Attempts have been made to break her party. 
I hope she will come to Delhi. I hope she will rise above it all and come to Delhi. Because that dialogue is necessary today to find a way out for the sake of Kashmir. And at the end of the day, apne hi to hai. Sab apne hi hai na. So we have to find a way out. We've got to move forward on this. Yes, and, and, and to add to that, even P senior PDP leaders like Naeem Akhtar have only just been released. Uh, so while it can be seen as a gesture to, you know, further uh, uh, improve things or send a message to the BDP to get them on the table, um, uh, you know, I agree with what Nija Chaudhary says that it will take time for people to figure this uh, internally and then say, okay, let's move forward. Let's at least have a conversation. Uh, let me go back. To Mr. Uh, Magdumi, we had a very uh, tricky line with you which we wanted to fix. I know you wanted to come in earlier. Go ahead, Imad. What did you want to say? I just wanted to, you know, say, you know, my friend uh, Saqib from the PDP said that, you know, there is a trust deficit. He spoke about, you know, the actions done by the central government on 5th of August 2019. They were in government with them. The agenda of alliance was laid out by the BJP in which it was clearly mentioned that the Article 35A and the uh, Article 370 will be abrogated. Why didn't they raise those concerns that time when they were running a government with them in coalition in Jammu and Kashmir? It's not, you know, the, let us let us understand, you know, they, they've all had been, you know, they were in government with them. They were, the coalition, BJP was their coalition partner. They, the BJP, ha the stand of abrogating Article 370 was clear. The BJP was clear on this. Why didn't they raise the, these concerns at that time? And now they speak about, you know, UN, UAPA Act and, you know, atrocities done on the journalists and others. Have they forgotten 2016? What they did on the streets of Kashmir? They pierced the eyes of young boys and girls with pellets. Why don't they remember their own time? My, my concern is that now okay. let us forget all let us now my concern is let us let us forget everything and let us you know the prime the prime minister of this country of that country you know we are also part of that country the prime minister has extended an invitation to them he has invited them to delhi to talk to him and you know raise their concerns on the uh, establishment of the democratic uh, processes in Jammu and Kashmir, I think they must go. They must, you know, not even think once before going and they must go and, you know, share their concerns with the Prime Minister as bluntly as they can. No, that's fine. But Imad, here is the question to you that I asked you the first time around also. What happens next? What happens then? Can, can we look at a conversation about statehood? Do we look at involving the political parties in the delimitation exercise and getting them on board with whatever uh, the way it is being decided right now? What happens next? That's more important beyond this meeting or starting with well, this I meeting. Well, I hope so. Well, I hope so because the Home Minister of India has on the floor of the House promised that the statehood will be restored when the appropriate time comes. And the, and the government of India has never said that we will discredit the mainstream political parties of Jammu and Kashmir. It's just that the circumstances and the reasons, you know, the, the prevailing situation led to their ignorance for a cup for some time but i don't think that the government of india will take any such measure which will discredit any mainstream political party or any mainstream political leader of jammu and kashmir because after all they also have a vote bank they also have people behind them they are answerable to the people of jammu and kashmir and i am at the very same time i'm very hopeful from the central government because on the sacred floor of the house in the parliament of india the home minister has said that the statehood will be restored. Okay, so then, the so then we come back to the point that Neha was also trying to make and build that things have improved. So then now is the time, uh, uh, Niti, uh, to look at statehood and begin that process if you feel the situation on ground has in improved uh, by all benchmarks. If it has, I'm sure, and probably that is the first step towards coming to one table and start discussing what the issues are and what needs to be done. And uh, just to respond to Mr. Joshi, sir, the terrorism going down is a Times of India report. I can have it sent to you through whoever. Uh, there are two IT parks that have come up. There are AIMS, there are nursing hospitals. And if you can't see all of that, the jobs have gone up, the handicraft exports from the state have gone up. And if you can't see all of those development issues in the state, then I, I probably have to say you're wearing blinkers and you're not able to see that. 
that said uh, tanvi the answer to your question yes the statehood was promised by mr amit shah on the floor of the parliament and that stands the only thing is that is it appropriate time today that is something that needs to come from the state and not from the union uh, government that need that assurance needs to come from the state right and what what is going to be the topic of this meeting is something that the prime minister knows and his people know there is that is not up for speculation it is going to eventually happen the politics is going to eventually start i cannot say if it is going to start today or next year or 10 days down the line that is up to the circumstances the stances in the state in the union territory mr manoj joshi you know <laughs> I have uh, covered Kashmir since 1990, and I've heard many government claims. Okay, so to say government says terrorism is declined, government says no, sir. This is know, Times of India report. No, this is not. I'm we, not saying the government. No, this saying is the Times of India report. Says that uh, everything is great, that development is occurring. Uh, uh, this thing I've heard this since 1990. I suspect probably before you were born. You know, and you and, and you still think, sir? And, you still think and, that and, the, the time allow her to finish. Better. Allow him to finish, please. Please, Let, okay. let's not interrupt. So, so, yeah, allow so, him to finish. So okay. My point is, I am a professional journalist. I'm extremely suspicious of government, all governments, meaning whether it's the Congress, whether it's anyone. I suspect when government says, you know, we know that we are we are uh, 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 accept our figures, accept our point of view. I think the, the best thing the journalist can do is to go and figure out for themselves. Yes. As I said, my information. I also, I'm, you know, I have sources in government, in security agencies, in other places. As I said, my information is that, and I'm being very frank here, that we are marking time. I'm not saying things have gone bad. I'm not saying things have gone, but I, I refuse to accept things that become better, because if things had become better, why should the government change track? Then they should carry on. The way they uh, think, way things were. If if everything was hunky dory, then the government should continue doing what they were doing, and paradise will soon emerge in Kashmir once again. So the 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 point I'm trying to make is there's obviously a problem. The government doesn't backtrack, not particular, and particularly this government. So this is not which is, backtracking. Which has a very, Has this a very, is a step very forward. This is not backtracking. You have to no, understand no, no. that it this was an eventuality. No, this is not backtracking. No, no, no. To invite the political parties to come to Can a I table and for, a, for a discussion is not a backtrack. You know, if they did not need to consult these parties to abolish Article 370, to break up the state, demote the state, why do they need the parties to then move forward? if they didn't need the parties to move backward why do they need the parties to move forward so what i'm trying to say is the parties are irrelevant that they are should have parties. gone they are can i just parties. come in for a second so good please. they they don't help the state so so the, the the point is the the parties are irrelevant uh, they the abdullahs and muftis and all that so the point is why is the government even consulting them why not move forward move forward with the delimitation process you have a commission which is already in place get that report get it implemented if that is what your intent is any which ways there is obviously a larger signaling here when the prime minister of the country calls the political parties for a meeting it's a significant move it's not part of just part of a routine process and that's the signal that's going on not just to the jammu and kashmir political leaders but actually for to the entire world that we are now holding conversations looking at restarting the dem proper democratic process in jammu and kashmir and of course ladakh as well at some point yes imad you wanted to come in before we wrap this up well, i would i would just like to tell joshi saab i agree with him things are not better you know if things things are, we, we cannot we cannot say that things are completely better because there is pakistani sponsored terrorism we continue losing innocent civilian lives as well as the lives of the our brave security forces whether from the jammu and kashmir police crpf or army on a regular basis i absolutely agree with him but at the very same time let me tell him that we are you know you know it has been after a long time that the people of jammu and kashmir are seeing transparency in the system and things are moving ahead 
please understand that the, the parties which have ruled in Jammu and Kashmir over these years, whether that is National Conference, PDP or any other party, they have always, you know, empowered their own people. They never let a common Kashmiri grow, whether inside, uh, you know, inside the establishment and outside the establishment. So there is, you know, to, we can, we cannot, we cannot, we still cannot say that there is, you know, uh, uh, things are moving in a very excellent manner. Things are, you know, completely better. There is terrorism. Terrorism remains to be a big challenge, which the security forces are tackling over here. Every other day, we continue losing innocent lives. Just recently, we lost a uh, policeman in the uh, Srinagar city who was on a leave and he was killed outside his house. So there are challenges, but at the very same time, there is transparency within the administration. The COVID was tackled by the government very efficiently. And if you see winters, this was for the first time, the electricity and snow was seen together by the people of Jammu and Kashmir. So there are a lot of things which are going, you know, in a, in a, uh, in a better manner like the uh, running of the daily affairs in the administration and other things. But yes, there continue to, to remain some challenges. Basically, which they're not tackled. perfect, and but think, they're still better. And I, think, and, I think, and I think the restoration of the political system and the restoration of an electoral democracy in Jammu and Kashmir will help us a lot in... Uh, tackling the Pakistani-sponsored terrorism as well. Well, yeah, absolutely. In in, in any case, it always I helps to, to to be to be able to have people cast their vote, people have their say on who's going to be governing, making policies, and implementing policies. And a situation has improved for the better of people in the last couple of years, they would keep that in mind when they go ahead and, and are allowed to cast their vote as well. Uh, Najmu Aksaki wanted to make a point quickly before we wrap up. Yes. Let's not sugarcoat government's efforts. I mean, they tried every which way possible to sort of curate a bonsai democracy. They planted a lot of saplings, you know, to, uh, to probably shift the ground and and to uh, sort of, you know, uh, uh, get uh, Muftis and Abdullahs and all the regional parties out of the picture. Let's not sugarcoat their moves. They did everything possible to take us out of the equation. This is the failure of the government. Let's not so they sugarcoat They did everything to maintain normalcy in the state, in the area. And they will continue to do whatever is required to maintain that normalcy in the area. If it includes is, anybody is, who wants to, no, your, sir, is, sir, this if is, this includes... This is the mindset that is wrong anybody. with the BJP. No, sir, Let democracy flourish in Jammu and Kashmir. Let people choose their representative. Don't impose their representative. We are nowhere, we're nowhere saying asking, that you know, people uh, cannot uh, uh, answering the That's previous why the entire about the elections were issue. organized no, and they were a success. The previous panelists about the credibility issue. I'll ask no, why, no, why, there is a, why there is a trust issue. Like, give me one moment, please. Uh, let me answer the previous panelists why there is a trust issue. You know, there is a trust issue. Do you know why? I'll answer your question. Because in when we formed an alliance with BJP, BJP, you know, signed a document saying that 370 and 35A will not be abrogated. That's why there's a trust. And they still abrogated it. You know, that you is the answer to your about question. An this that is broke. the government of u -turn. That broke because they of your ideology of and the BJP's ideology that did not match. That was the Let's reason. Let's not sugarcoat their failure as a step of magnanimity. We were very nationalist. You obviously had Huryat interests in mind. Obviously, that was not going to what be Why did you think was... otherwise initially? Did you, Neeti, or your party believe otherwise uh, and there thought that the PDP the or the Muftis platform, would have a change of heart just because they were joining platform. hands with the Nationalist there, Party? Let's just be very there, honest there, about it. Was it was an alliance of convenience was, and it was abandoned and destroyed when, 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 it, when, it was, when it suited the party. That's about it. But I am completely out of time. So I'm going to leave this conversation here. Hope to have all of you back in a few more days when we when we do see that meeting take place when we know what all the uh, who all are going to be attending it and what really gets discussed what's the conversation we viewers here on mirror now we have in the past including with many of the panelists who are present here today had conversations held conversations and raised the issue of restarting the democratic process of holding elections allowing people to select and elect their own government and putting politicians responsible as legislators for their people in Jammu and Kashmir. We've repeatedly raised this issue a year ago as well, asked about where the delimitation exercise was, why was it taking so long when it got an extension uh, by the government for, for, for another year. And we hold that view even now.
It's been two years almost since the abrogation of 370, since the special status of Jammu and Kashmir was taken away. And after that, the region was split into two union territories. It is now time, it is high time that we bring back the electoral process in Jammu and Kashmir. If we continue to say, reiterate and believe that this region is as much a part of India as any other part of this country, then they should be allowed the same rights that any of us do as well. Thank you for joining us on this conversation.